channel. For those of you who don't know me or who've never been here before, I'm Rachel, the owner of The Eclectic Cottage in Spokane, Washington. Uh, happy Tuesday. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I know I did. My husband and I went on our junk run on Sunday and hit up some of our favorite haunts. And although our haul wasn't huge, I did find some cool stuff that I'm excited to show you. So I hope you'll tune in on Thursday for my thrift haul. Uh, and then yesterday, I spent quite a bit of time out in our bungalow at home uh, getting that space clean and uh, my bungalow is it's been underutilized for since we built it basically um, it had been built for a specific purpose that we never got to use it for um, and so then last year it just kind of got used to keep my seedlings in and start some seeds in and um, this year I kind of want to take it back and repurpose it and um, maybe start using it as a creative space for myself so um, I'm really excited to take you along on that journey as well and show you kind of what it looked like when I went out there and started cleaning what it looked like when I was done and I as I kind of furnish it and take it over so um, you'll see that video coming uh, I'm not sure exactly when but I'll get that posted for you soon and like I said today's Tuesday which means I have a flip for you and kind of like last week I redid six more items out of my stash this week so uh, I worked really hard I think they turned out great I'm excited to show you um, all of them there I definitely have a couple favorites and I'm sure you'll you'll probably Probably agree with me on them I'll tell you what they are at the end of the video and if you like content like this and you want to see more kind of my behind the scenes here at the cottage please subscribe to my channel and then hit the little notification bell and that will let you know when I do upload a new video anyway without further ado here are the six projects that I finished for you this past week so for project one I painted these three birds and I painted them initially with DIY's Hey Sailor. And here I'm putting the second coat of paint on. Uh, and as you can see, I'm just kind of pouncing the paint on. I like the texture that pouncing gives rather than trying to brush it on because uh, the brush strokes never look real super even. So I just prefer this look, especially for wax. I think when you're doing a different colored wax, it just looks better. And then once I got them painted, I decided as much as I liked the Hay Sailor, I wanted the birds to be different colors. So I did one Bohemian Blue and one Apothecary. And there you can see the different colors. I think they looked so much better when they were done. And lastly, I am white waxing these just to kind of bring out the little bit of texture and some of the details on the birds. Uh, I just love the way white wax looks over uh, the DIY paint. So I'm just putting it directly on the birds uh, on a nice, pretty even coat and then taking a shop towel and wiping the excess off. I did that same technique on all three birds. And although this was a pretty simple project, I love how they turned out. And there they are. For project two, I've had this silver tray sitting in my kitchen for a while. Uh, you can see it's rusted. That's because I had some plants sitting on it. So the first step is taking some lemon oil and getting as much of that scrubbed off as I can. And then I'm gonna take some Rust-Oleum Crystal Clear Enamel and seal it to make sure that stuff doesn't come up through my paint. Next, I'm giving the bottom two good coats of DIY White Swan and follow that up with a coat of DIY Big Top to seal it. I flipped it over and painted the top with two coats of DIY White Swan. And then I took my damp shop towel and distressed it, trying to bring some of that silver back up through the white paint to show off the details in this platter. I think it turned out really nice. And then it's time to seal it. And I did use Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Enamel on this to seal. 
Next, I decided the tray was a bit plain, so I am taking Neutral Florals by Redesign by Prima, uh, their decoupage paper, and I am tracing out the base of the tray. So just trying to make as perfect a circle as I can. And then I'm carefully cutting that out along the line that I made. Trying to be as careful as I can to get an exact cut. Once that's done, I'm just simply using DIY's liquid patina, putting a smooth even coat down on one side just to kind of get the paper started. So then I lay it down, line it up as best I can, smooth it out into the liquid patina that I'd already put down, then peel the paper back to where I had put down the liquid patina and I finish coating the rest of the plate. And then smooth it down with my hand and I went around the edge and just wiped any excess off. Then the last step is just taking uh, my brush and putting one more coat of liquid patina over the top. For project three, I found this cute little wooden box at the thrift store, and I'm really not sure exactly what its intended purpose was, but I thought it'd make a super cute mail holder. So first thing I'm doing is giving it a good cleaning using crud cutter and then following that up with just some clean water, wiping it down with a paper towel. And next, I don't really understand why they put the hole in the back of it where they did because it is definitely off center. So I decided I would fill it with some uh, wood putty and just make it go away. So that's what I'm doing here. I took some uh, painter's tape and put it on the back and then I'm just mixing up my wood putty, trying to get a nice thick putty-like consistency. Uh, and then I'm just putting it into the hole with my finger, just kind of pressing it down in, um, wiping off the excess. And then I take my little trowel and uh, try and get it as flat as I can. And once it's dry, I take the tape off and then just sand over where the wood putty was. And it's amazing how nice and smooth it comes out. Uh, and then I took my sanding block and put the paper over it just to make sure that it got a nice smooth finish. Uh, and then next I am taking Aviary by DIY and giving this two good coats of paint. So here I am putting the second coat on. And then I'm going to let that dry and then I actually take this one outside and hand sand it just to basically smooth it out and give it a good distressing. It's kind of hitting all the edges, making sure I get all the sides, I get across the top, just trying to make some of that wood show back through to show you some of the detail. And then I am finishing this off with DIY's white wax. And it was a little tough getting my brush in the inside of it, but I managed. Uh, and then just giving it one good coat of white wax and wiping the excess back with a shop towel. Really easy. And I love how it turned out. I've had this little gazebo birdhouse sitting around in the cottage for a while now and it hasn't sold so I thought maybe it was time I took it apart 
and gave it a little makeover to see if I could find it its forever home. So I start by taking out the metal rod and the uh, plate that hold it all together and giving the top of it two good even coats of White Swan by DIY. And once the paint is on, I go back through with my damp shop towel and give it a really good distress, trying to make some of that wood shine back through. And then I seal the top with DIY's Big Top. Then I start painting the bottom. I gave it two good even coats of Apothecary by DIY. Uh, it was a little bit of a bear getting inside of it, but I managed. And once that is done, then it's again with the distressing damp shop towel, just trying to bring out some of the detail of the white that was underneath. And then again, sealing it with DIY's big top and putting it all back together again. I hope this makeover helps give this little uh, birdhouse a second life and that somebody finds it and loves it and wants to take it home. For project five, I decided I would take a couple more pillar holders out of my stash and get them painted and out on the floor. So I grabbed these two metal pillar holders. I really like the look of these. They're very simple, but they remind me of like Roman columns. And so I thought it'd be fun to kind of make them look like uh, cement columns. And so I'm painting them with two even coats of old school by DIY. And then I'm going back with white wax, DIY white wax, brushing it on, trying to make sure it gets into all the little grooves and the nooks and crannies. And then I'm taking my shop towel and just kind of feathering the excess off. I don't want to wipe it all away. I just really want to leave as much as I can in those grooves. So I'm just doing a really light, like I said, kind of feathering the um, shop towel over it to get the excess off. And I love how they turned out. My sixth and final project was definitely the most time consuming of all of them, but I got this box for practically nothing and I really wanted to dress it up nicely. So I start by peeling the decoupage paper or craft paper, whatever that was off of the front and then cutting out that wire handle that was on it. I'm just getting rid of that. I really didn't like it anyway. So I took it outside and I did sand as much of the rest of that paper off as I could. Um, I meant to tape that for you, but unfortunately I did not hit the record button. And then here I am taking Little Black Dress by DIY and giving it a coat of paint. And I'm not really stressed about making sure that it's got perfect coverage uh, just because I am going to sand it back down just to kind of give it a worn, more distressed look. And here's the piece after I had sanded it. And I apologize again, for whatever reason, my phone did not record uh, the sanding of this. But you can see the edges are a little bit distressed and looks a little more aged and worn, which is what I was going for. And here what I'm doing is I am dry brushing some white swan over the black on both sides. And what dry brushing is, it, you take your brush, you dip it in your paint, and then you wipe most of the paint off of the brush. And then you feather what's left over your piece lightly and gently until you get your desired look. 
I didn't want this super white and I didn't want it really streaky. I just wanted it to have a little bit of white to soften that black up on both sides. Next up, I decided I wanted to put decoupage paper on the ends of this. And as you've seen in my previous videos, um, decoupage paper tends to look a little bit better and a little bit brighter against a white background. So I'm just painting both ends with a coat of White Swan by DIY. And then I'm taking my decoupage paper and this one is rice paper by uh, Redesigned by Prima and it's called Floral and Dream. And my first step is just to wet it a little bit and iron it to get the creases out. And then of course I have to recrease it and fold it so that I can fit it into my paper cutter. Uh, and once I'd measured my sides and knew what size I needed, I cut those both out and got them ready to go on. Just trying to be really careful to cut and make sure everything measured out is measured out well. So the next step is putting the paper on. And so I start at the base and just put a little bit of liquid patina right at the base, line up my paper, make sure it's seated well in the bit of liquid patina that I put down. And once that happens, then I peel the paper back and I just continue up the piece with a nice even coat of liquid patina followed by the paper, making sure not to get any wrinkles in the paper as I go. Pretty easy process. A little bit of liquid patina, put the paper down and just kind of follow it on up. Once that's done, I press it down and then follow it with one good even coat of liquid patina over the top. And here I am doing the same process on the other side. Next, I am, once the liquid patina is completely dry, I'm taking my sanding block with some sandpaper and going around the edges and just kind of pushing away from me to get that excess paper sanded off. Now, the main reason I dry brushed the white swan over the little black dress on both sides of this piece is that I knew I wanted to go back over them with a stencil. And I had picked this stencil, it's called Script by Redesign by Prima, and I wanted the words to be just very faint. And so I'm using a makeup sponge that I bought at the Dollar Tree to apply the paint to the stencil. And I dip the makeup sponge into the paint and then kind of offload it on a piece of paper and then go over the stencil one word at a time pressing down into the stencil with the makeup sponge to make sure that the paint actually gets onto the piece. And again, I'm not being really meticulous. I don't mind if there's a couple spots that are missing. I, I just want this to be nice and faint. And I think it turned out beautifully. So I sealed this with a coat of Rust-Oleum matte clear enamel. And then I'm on to the handle. Now I already had one spindle that was painted black, so I cut it down to size. And here I am just giving it a good distressing with my damp shop cloth or shop towel. Then I drilled a couple pilot holes right in the center on each end, fitted it in, and then used, I believe they're drywall screws that I used to adhere the handle to the piece. So here you can see I'm using my drill to screw in each side. And when I did that, I kind of tinked the paper a little bit and show you how to fix that. You just put a little bit of liquid patina on there. I tore a piece of paper out about the size and color that I needed. And then I simply went over that with a little bit more liquid patina and it seals up that hole and you can't even tell it's there. Next, I am taking a couple of butterflies out of the Papillon Collection transfer set by Redesign by Prima and applying those to this, each side of the box. And so transfers are pretty simple. You peel them off the backing and then you lay them on your piece and then you use the transfer stick to rub the 
the transfer down into the paint on your piece and you peel that vellum sheet back as you go just kind of rub a little peel rub a little peel making sure that everything is sticking to your piece and once you're done just give it a good rub and make sure that it's nicely burnished into your piece and there you go and last step i am giving this whole thing one good even coat of big top by diy and then it's done today's projects which one was your favorite please comment below and let me know I know my favorites were definitely the box was my top uh, favorite of all of them uh, followed probably by the silver tray so um, I really enjoyed doing all of them I think they all turned out beautifully but those were definitely my favorites anyway that's it for right now uh, please join me on Thursday I do have a thrift haul for you for Thursday and uh, if you like my content again I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel just hit the little subscribe button below and then hit the little notification bell and that will let you know when I post new content. Right now it's Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, that could change but for now that's kind of what I'm trying to stick to. Anyway I hope you enjoyed today's video uh, and please again comment below let me know what your favorite project was. Hope to see you back here on Thursday. Have a great rest of your week. Bye. Mm -hmm.